Will we see the Denver housing market come to a crash and burn in 2024? Well, we are going to go through 2024 predictions. If you are thinking of buying a house this year, this video is for you. So make sure you stay and get all the information so you can make the best choice possible and not cost yourself hundreds of thousands of dollars. Let's get right into it. Now, these predictions are specifically for the city of Denver, not a uh, the outskirts and the suburbs around there. And prediction number one is we will see more people move out of Denver than move into Denver this year. Last year was one of the first years that Colorado has seen in a long time where we had more people leave the state of Colorado than move into the state. And I think that is going to be more specific to Denver in this coming year than the rest of the Colorado area in general. So more people moving out of Denver than moving into it for 2024. What does this mean? This means more housing inventory will come available for those buyers. Now, I know a lot of people have complained that the Denver housing market has gotten very expensive over the last five to 10 years, and maybe we'll, we'll see some of that subside a little bit in some areas of Denver, but inventory is still significantly lower than demand. We have a lot of people moving here from California, Texas, and other parts of the country that still see Denver as a great value. If you compare Denver home prices, where the median home price is about 550, 560 right now, for for a single family residence, compare that to San Diego or one of the places on the West Coast where a single family home is gonna cost you $800,000. Denver is still a crazy good value. But reason for more people moving out of Denver than moving in. 2024, we are coming up on an election year and we know what accompanies elections. Civil unrest, protests, and yes, sadly, riots. And these seem to be the worst in the most urban of areas. You think back four years ago and even eight years ago, we did see riots and protests in these urban areas. And when people see that again and it comes around every four years, they're gonna get fed up with it and choose to live somewhere else. So I predict that a lot of people that live in the inner city urban areas of Denver will move out to the suburbs to get away from some of that. Also, you can get a lot more home for your money if you move outside the city limits of Denver to one of the amazing suburbs. You have a higher quality of life, a little bit better value in the home that you purchase. So we have already seen this in the lower downtown area of Denver. It has been a buyer's market for about over a year where we have a significant increase in the amount of homes that are for sale compared to the amount of buyers that are coming in. So that is an area of town where people have actually gotten homes for under uh, market value and able to have more negotiating power because there are so many options. Now, I don't anticipate that that will spread out into all the suburbs of Denver because a lot of those people that are leaving Denver still love Colorado, the active lifestyle, and all the things that Colorado has to offer. So they will just be uh, moving out into the suburban areas. <music> You guys wanted to jump in here if you are thinking of a move to Colorado or whether that's out of Colorado maybe you've had it with Denver and you're ready to move on to something else please hit me up at the information on the screen call text or email uh, nights weekends I am here for you I got your back on all things Denver real estate so call text or email and I would love to help you out with your real estate needs here in Colorado <music> Number two, let's talk about interest rates. A lot of people have been very sensitive to interest rates and going from where we were at 2%, 3%, all the way up to just over 8% in 2023 was a drastic, drastic change. And a lot of people went to the sidelines and decided not to shop for a house because it had just gotten too expensive. On the flip side, a lot of people had decided not to sell their home. They didn't want to take um, less than they thought the home was worth. So they pulled the home off the market in hopes of waiting till the interest rates subsided subsided a little bit and we'll be putting their homes back on the market when we see an increase in buyer activity. Now interest rates where they currently sit is about 6.7, 6.8%, which is a pretty healthy rate for the real estate market overall. Between that 4 and 7% interest is uh, very healthy for the overall market, keeps a lot of balance in there where people can still afford homes and that homeowners don't lose the value that they have in their homes that they've built up over the years. 
Interest rates, I predict, will fall to about 6%. We may see just a brief time where they're in the fives. If they were to go below that, I think we would see a huge increase in the buyer activity. The Fed would get a little bit nervous and start raising the rates again to temper the housing market. They really did their best to get the housing market to crash. Since a lot of people decided not to sell their homes, that did not happen. And since a lot of people kept their jobs and were still able to make those mortgage payments, they weren't forced to sell in uh, a pre-foreclosure situation. So the Fed did get inflation back down to a more reasonable rate. The housing market did not crash because we had a significantly lower amount of homes that were actually for sale. And that is what kept home prices up. If you are a buyer thinking of making a home purchase in 2024, I would caution you not to wait too long and not in hopes of catching the knife as it's falling, maybe trying to get a interest rate at five and a half percent, hoping that that will come because if we see that the competitiveness in the housing market will significantly increase. And this is really going to affect you if you are in one of the maybe entry level price points for a home here in Colorado. We see a lot of people that are you know shopping for their first home, whether that be a condo or townhome in that three to 400 $450,000 range. We will see a lot more competition coming in for those homes in the Denver metro area. Not only will we see more people that are looking to buy a home trying to get those, but we'll we will also see the return of a lot of investors coming into the market looking to buy up rental properties. So if you are in one of those lower price points, this is an entry level home for you, or you're looking to just get into something in that $400,000 range, I would encourage you to look at the current situation. If you can afford to buy that home, buy it today, because if you wait until the end of the year, that home may be more expensive and there may also be more competition for it. So this is kind of your window right before the spring right before we see a lot of other people come into the housing market. If you are thinking of purchasing a home in 2024, don't hesitate if you are in one of those lower price brackets. <music> Prediction number three, unemployment has remained low in Colorado and the job market has remained significantly strong here in our Denver metro area. So we do see that that will continue to drive appreciation and home prices up. What we need to see for a crash to happen is a significant increase in the inventory of homes that are for sale and a significant reduction in the amount of buyers out there that will tip the supply and demand scales back in favor of buyers where there are a lot more options and home prices are falling. We haven't seen that one like I mentioned, we have the lack of inventory. Uh, a reason we have a lack of inventory is a very strong and healthy economy and job market. People have been able to pay their mortgages. They haven't fallen behind. They haven't gone into pre-foreclosure like they did in 2008. And as a result, they have not had to sell their homes. And a lot of people chose not to sell their homes even though they wanted to move because they didn't want to pay significantly higher payments each month for a home that was just slightly better than the one that they were currently living in. We will see an increase in inventory come in 2024 with people moving out of Denver, but we will not see a significant enough increase to cause a crash. So if you are still hoping for the crash in 2024, you're going to have to put it off for another year. Zillow's estimates for 2023 were that we would see a significant decline in the price of homes, anywhere from 5%, maybe even up to 7% in some estimations. The way 2023 played out, we actually saw a 1% to 2% increase across the board in most of the Denver metro zip codes. <laughs> Prediction for new homes and new construction. We have seen a lot of new construction around the Denver metro area. I believe that home prices in the new construction environment will remain fairly stable with a slight increase. The reason for this is a lot of these builders, in order to compete with resale homes and get people to come in the door and wait 12 months for their home to be built, is they are offering significantly lower interest rates. Sometimes one to 2% under the uh, 
current environment. Now to do this, home builders, one had set aside some money to purchase these mortgages when they were cheaper, but those have all but been used up for the most part, but they're also using other funds to uh, work with the mortgage company to get these rates lower. And generally what that includes is a higher home purchase price. When we're talking about a resale home, let's say that home was listed for $700,000, they ended up selling it for 675. That $25,000 could be used in one of two ways, just a reduction in the price, or you could actually use that money to buy down your interest rate, whether that's a temporary buy down for one or two years where you have a significantly lower payment, or you could put that money towards a complete buy down of the interest rate and get a lower interest rate overall. Builders are using that same strategy going forward. So you may pay a higher price for the home overall, but you may be able to get a significantly lower interest rate that may make your payments more affordable. So I do see that homes values in the new construction realm will re remain steady and have a slight increase. <laughs> Here is something to watch for. This will be an indicator that we will see a decrease in prices, and that has to do with the rental market. Right now, the median rent in Denver is about $1,600 a month for a rental home. Sometimes in the inner city of Denver, that's a one bedroom or a two bedroom. If you go further out, you can get a little bit more um, space for your money, but median rental price in Denver is $1,600 a month. If we see vacancy rates increase, which we haven't seen over the last three years, but if we see vacancy rates increase, we will see rental prices come down. Now, how will that affect the resale market and if you're looking to buy a home? Well, if we see more people going into the rental market and choosing to rent a home versus buy a home, that will decrease the amount of demand that we have. And as a result, it may affect home prices going forward throughout the year. Right now, we have not seen a decrease in rent. So as long as we, if you are watching the rental market and rental prices and you see them remain steady, that is good news for the housing market that uh, homeowners will retain the value of their homes. If we start to see higher vacancy rates and more people moving out of buying a home and into renting a home, we may see prices in the resale market fall a little bit. <music> guys i hope you found this information valuable if you are thinking of purchasing a home please hit me up at the information or if you're thinking of selling a home here in the denver metro area uh, call text or email i got your back on all things real estate here in the state of colorado and i would love to help you out on your relocation to or out of colorado 